Uh, welcome to another session of the lesson in physics. Uh, in particular, today we will discuss Newton's laws. Uh, we will look at the application of Newton's laws. And so basically today, we, we are not looking at um, the basic concepts. Uh, those who want to get the basic concepts on Newton's laws of motion, you can check on the other presentation that we had before this one. And so today we are merely applying Newton's laws of motion. And so we'll go uh, through um, a question and then we answer that question. And through that, uh, we hope that we can cement uh, the understanding of Newton's laws, in particular its application in physics. Uh, so we go. And so as I stated earlier today, we are basically looking at uh, a question on the application of Newton's laws in particular the third law. And so the question is uh, a block of mass, 2.5 kilograms, is placed on a frictionless inclined plane of uh, angle, 30 degrees, and it is connected by a rope over a massless and a frictionless pulley. Uh, the second book of mass, five, uh, kilograms is also connected and it is hanging vertically as shown below. Consider the law to be massless as well. And so there are very salient uh, parts of this question that we should consider uh, before we do the answering of, of it. Firstly, the most important one is that uh, the inclined plane is frictionless, meaning that there is no friction at all. And uh, as you are aware, friction is the opposing force to the movement of one object, which is rubbing against another. And so on that inclined plane, there is no friction at all. Also, the rope, we consider that uh, it has a negligible mass, which will not involve in the calculation as well as the pulley, the mass is not going to be considered here, as well as the friction uh, over which the, the rope actually goes over. And so I thought this is very important because uh, the, the other questions which will come on the application of Newton's laws will definitely consider friction. But for this particular one, we are not considering friction at all. And so here is the question. We have a book here, mass one, and then another book here, mass two. The, this one is actually inclined at 30 degrees, and this is the pulley. And so this is the rope tying this book, and it goes over there, pull it there, and this one is hanging, hanging vertically. And so um, these questions are, are very simple as long as we understand the concepts. Uh, and so we will now look at how we can answer this question. So the first part of uh, looking at this question is to consider the forces which are acting especially on the book, which is at an inclined plane. For this other one, it's obvious. The only opposing force is a, a actually gravity. But for this one, we have to resolve to a common because it's at an angle. And so the first thing which I'm emphasizing here, which is very important, is uh, to draw a free board diagram and this is very important. Uh, vertically up 
here uh, where this object is uh, actually placed there is a normal force so this is the normal force here which goes through straight okay so it has the uh, this other part which is uh, on top as you as you remember we indicated that uh, an object which is not moving up or down to have a force downwards and a force upwards because it's not moving up and it's moving down and so also vertically down there is the weight this is another force which is uh, the weight of this book here so we have to resolve uh, this into components and so this is very simple so since we know that this is 30 degrees here this angle here theta is also 30 degrees and so we can draw a triangle like that and this is 90 and so this angle here is adjacent to the side and therefore resolving uh, mg this is mg here which is the weight which is the hypotenuse here so for us to get this part here we have to say mg cos theta so this side which is adjacent to this angle 30 degrees is actually mg cos theta we will say oh, this is the hypotenuse and then this is the another part which is opposed to this angle is this part here so we can use sine here so this is mg sine theta so you notice that uh, this is parallel to that so this similarly is also mg sine theta so it means that now we have resolved this in two components and uh, so this one will have no angle at all so here now this object is moving uh, up and then here it's moving down so uh, as we we know the basic principle that we know here is that uh, from newton's second law is that uh, force is equal to mass times acceleration and uh, the other thing we need to know is that uh, the normal force as i indicated here this normal force here fn this is the positive part and this is the negative part is equal to fn is equal to mg cos theta this is the force upward pulling pushing this upwards and this is the force for this object pushing it down and so that's why we are saying the normal force is equal to mg uh, cos theta and so the normal force actually affects the, the body through its rubbing with another body which is the friction so the friction is actually given by the uh, this symbol mu which means uh, uh, it can either be coefficient of static friction for a, an object which is not moving or coefficient of kinetic friction for a body which is moving multiplied by the normal force so friction uh, for example here as we stated that this object is going up here if it had friction we expect that the friction will be opposing going down it will be opposing this force for the tension to be going down because it is actually between the the surface of the book as well as the, the inclined plane this wedge here so we have now two opposing forces here we said there is one here which is mg sin theta you know this one is pulling down once as well as friction which is also bringing 
downwards. But in our case here, we indicated that there is no friction. And so that's why we said that friction is equal to a coefficient of kinetic friction since this object will be moving times mg cos theta because we said um, the normal force is equal to mg cos theta. And now let's come back to our basic equation from Newton's second law where I said force is equal to mass times acceleration. So what is the resultant force? So we are actually looking at it. the resulting force here, which should be equal to the mass times the acceleration. First of all, we consider mass one. And so mass one here, uh, since we said that this object is moving upwards, it means that the tension is force is greater than all these other forces. So we are saying tension minus uh, this force here, which we got, which is mg, mg sine theta. That is the m1 g sine theta for mass number one. Said so this one is pulling down. And there is also another force which is op also opposing the movement of this object going up here, which we stated that that is actually friction, which is between the book here and the grind plane. So we have to subtract also, which is this one, the friction. So we're subtracting mu mg cos theta, which is the friction, which is equal to m1 times the acceleration. Because this object actually is accelerating upwards. Now, we stated that actually from the question that we consider that there is no friction between the book and the inclined plane. Therefore, this part here, mu mg cos theta becomes zero. And then we can make t the subject of the formula. If we make t the subject of the formula, we take this part inside. So we're going to have m1 times acceleration plus this m1 g sine theta. And so this is the first part of the equation that we have developed for this object, which is actually accelerating upwards. And so we are done with this one. And this is the most important part to understand on how we come up with the resultant force. The second part is the obvious one. Uh, we are saying here, this object is only acted on by uh, acceleration due to gravity. And therefore, we since it's moving down, it means that uh, the weight of this book with mass two will be greater than the tension. Okay. And so we can say uh, mg minus tension is equal to m2 times acceleration. Since this is for mass two, uh, since the only uh, forces here is the weight and the tension here. And the, another thing that we have to state is that this slow pattern does not extend. And therefore the tension here on mass one a one here will be the same as the tension in mass two. And so here we can as well make T the subject of formula, then we get T mass two and the acceleration due to gravity minus mass two times acceleration. And so we have two equations and we said the tension Z are the same. And therefore we can equate these equations since the tension is the same. So we can get this equation here, we put it here, which will be equal to the other equation, 
which we got here for tension. Equate them. And the, after equating the two equations, then we can gather the right terms together. Acceleration should come on this side on its own, as well as the equations, the, the other parts which contain acceleration due to gravity on the other side. And then you can factor out the, the acceleration. And this is what we come up with. And then we can divide and then we come up with the equation, which is this one here. And so here, we just now substitute the figures. We know that M2 is 5 kg and G is equal to 9.80 uh, meters per square seconds. And then M1 is 2.5 kg and G is 9.8 meters per square seconds. And then you have uh, sine H divided by Mass one is 2.5 plus mass two, which is 5 kg. And therefore, we get our answer as 3.3 meters per square seconds. So this is the acceleration of the two objects, actually. This book will have the same acceleration as this one, because the slope does not extend. And therefore, we have found the acceleration for the two books, that is for mass one and mass two. The other part of the equation asks us, asks us to find the tension. So for the tension, since we made T the subject of the formula, and we found that T can give us this equation, the first equation, and also T can give us this second equation. So we merely substitute our acceleration in one of these equations. Now, on our part, we have chosen equation number two, which is T is equal to M2G minus M2A, which is actually this equation here. And so here we merely now substitute the uh, uh, what is given here. We know that the mass is 5 kg and the acceleration to do gravity is equal to 9.8 minus 5 kg times 3.3. And this gives us 32.5 newtons. So the basic concept here we have learned is uh, that um, actually at an inclined plane, we can easily resolve the uh, actually the forces into their components and be able to get uh, the x uh, component forces and this helps us now to know uh, which forces are actually supposed to be subtracted from the main force the force which is actually this is the main force which is making the object going up and the only opposing forces are mg sine theta, if this object is going down, it's going up, and then the friction as well. But in our part today, we didn't consider the friction. I hope you have enjoyed this question and the way we have solved it. And so remember to subscribe to my YouTube and remember that there are more other questions on the same principles that we need to actually learn, particularly where there is friction. I thank you.